So good afternoon, Captain Oloko. Towards the NNSL website project, we are doing this interview. And we are going to start with question number one, to ask you about your parentage, your place of birth, okay. your uh, state for my both my parents are born in Lagos. Uh, place of birth is Lagos, and uh, actually the state of birth is also Lagos State. Yeah. Early education, uh, I started in primary school in Lagos Island, and I started in college in Solo, also in Lagos. It was after my wife that I joined the NNSF. Okay. What year was this? Uh, that must be 1975. I actually joined the NSA. I, okay. I finished my education in 20, 1974. Mm. Joined 1975. Okay. So please narrate your career with NSA. You know, when yeah, you were employed. Well, you yes, were... Uh, when I was employed in NSA, that's when a lot of kids were employed, actually. Some were sent to the UK, while some were sent to Ghana. I was fortunate to be among those who were sent to Ghana, mm. where we stayed one year mm. for our Kadeshi. Okay. Uh, as you know, those who went to the uh, UK uh, stayed, uh, I think, three months in school. But for uh, those of us who went to Ghana, we stayed nine months. I mean, yeah, one calendar year to, for our Kadeshi. Mm. After that, we are now posted to vessels as cadets. In, uh, in Ghana, mm -hmm. it's a kind of a full-time full -time, uh, education that we had, navigational education, and uh, some drilling also. Uh, when we got to, first of all, in Ghana, being a new place, uh, it took us time to adjust, never mind, the same African country. Yes. But it took us to adjust to the life in Ghana. Because it was more or less like a military institution. Yes. Every morning we have to go have a parade. We have a parade, the uh, quartermaster, I would say, mm. who will deal you every morning. So, uh, then also, uh, we actually did a passing out parade in yeah. Ghana. Yeah. Just after that, we went back to we went back to Lagos, where we were posted to vessels. My first vessel was uh, River Ogun. Uh, yes, we did the River Ogun. My first vessel at sea. Yeah. Was River Ogun, I think. Who was your man? Who was your captain? Uh, so one is Patrick anyway. I can't remember his name. Okay, no. <laughs> okay, and uh, remember his name. River on the River Ogun. River Ogun, yes. I remember his name. No. I remember. I will remember whether it was River Ogun or because it was not River Ogun. Sorry, actually one of the older ones to River Ogun. Okay. I will remember the name. Okay, fine. We joined in Sapley. Okay. We were to go to Kalaba. From Sapley. Okay. And the first time we went to sea, actually on the vessel, mm. I remember a lot of us they just threw up. <laughs> a lot of, uh, I mean, okay, we have five kids from Ghana mm -hmm. who joined the vessel. But that is surprising because I thought that uh, at the training school, at the nautical college, they would have taken you. Uh, no, we did not go that time. Not the Ghana Nautical College was not yet a regional college, a regional maritime institution, which it is now. It was run solely by Ghana Ghanaian government. Okay. They didn't have uh, a training vessel. I see. No, they didn't have a training vessel. So it's whatever they teach us in class. Although we do visit vessels yes. that come, like all these blaster vessels. Yeah. I will do visit them when they come to port. Okay. Then send back and go back to school. I see. Yes. But for that nine months. For that nine months. I see. Yes. That's why I say it was full education uh training. Not, I see. Uh, okay. 
so your time. first experience was when you boarded the, the, uh, I remember the, the internet service or yes, at, I remember uh, the name at uh, Sapele. Sapele. I remember the names of people who uh, were Wall Street, uh, who are now Captain Das, Captain uh, Ilori Faburo is now an Oba. Okay. Kola Oli, Nomasi, Lepsilon, Ugo. Uh, were four decades, mm. four decades, okay, and two engineers. And so, when you left Sapley to Caraba, where were you headed to abroad? <coughs> no, no, yes, you know, the vessel was a trading vessel, yes, she was loading, she was to go and load logs in Calabar. okay. So, after loading logs in the Sapley, we went to Calabar. okay. So the first time the person went to see, I mean, it's, it's a brand new experience for us. Okay. And uh, obviously, if you have not been to see before, yes. the first time going to see mm. will be rough. Mm. Actually, after Calabar, then uh, we headed for Liverpool. I see. That journey, I think the captain was Captain Le Miseau. Okay. Captain Le Miseau, yeah. Frenchman. Mm. So the uh, the journey to the boy to Liverpool was quite rough. Quite rough. We had a training officer and I expatriate. Mm -hmm. Ex naval officer. I can't remember that was name. Mm -hmm. The sea was quite rough. At a point in time uh, we were asked to leave the deck because the vessel was rolling so much. One of us cadets actually Val, who was an engineer cadet, that was living sea. And that's how I left sea. <laughs> that's how I left sea. Is that so? Yes, that's how I left sea. He never looked back. As soon as we got to Liverpool, he said he had enough of sea. Do you know his name? What was his name? Uh, it's from around the door. Okay. I remember the name is Sidney Long. Okay. <laughs> that's how I left sea. Because the weather was quite rough. So what happened? He, he now went to the NNSL office? No, no, he left the company because you know as cadets, you are really not uh, part of the office. You are employed to be seamen, to be okay. officers on the vessel. Okay. And uh, he didn't want, maybe the opportunity was there for him, maybe if he had wanted to go to the office. Yes. But we didn't know that time. So we just <coughs> left him. So when you mean left C, that means he, 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 he left. He just went on his own. He yes. didn't tell anybody. No, no. He told the officer. I mean that he was leaving. Okay. They flew him back. Okay, they flew him back. That's yes. actually the point I was they, interested. They flew him back to Nigeria. To Nigeria. Okay. Yes. He said he's no more interested. Interested. So, <laughs> that was a rough yeah. experience. Yes. <laughs> actually, you need to have been determined to remain at sea. I see. The experience we had. I see. Our first time going to sea. It was really tough. I see. Because of the rolling, the rolling and, and the, yes, the rolling and the pitching. To us, then it was really for the older seamen, it was nothing. Yes. But for us, it is. Yes. We were just coming fresh. We were just coming fresh to see. <laughs> so we have to be really determined to continue. I see. Yes. Maybe the young man thought it was like that every day. Yes, yes. He thought I see. Although in retrospect, I mean, I see sometimes can be rough. Yes. Can be very rough. Yeah. Can be very rough. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we better now go to. Yeah, how did I decide to go into seafaring? Yes. My dad was an engineer at sea. I see. Which uh, at sea? You mean the same, same national line? line. The same, same national line. line. Okay. Yes. Okay. It was a third engineer at sea. Okay. The same national line. Okay. So seeing him, you know, sometimes you look up to your mentor, my husband, dad. I want to also go to sea. So after my second school education, I applied to national line. It happened that you are taking cadets. Yeah. That's how I found myself at sea. I see. Hmm. That is, a, that is a very interesting story. Mm -hmm. All right. So who were your peers, colleagues? Do you remember any of your... Uh, I still remember quite those, some of those. Like I said, we cadets uh, that were there then because uh, we were sitting on the... 
uh, the dead vessels. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of that vessel because we had about about where I met some. I remember the name anyway. Yeah. Uh, we had the Captain Lori Faboro, uh, Captain Ibunaya, Captain Manuel Wangu, uh, Uhurogu, engineer. Uh, those are cadets, we are all cadets. Captain yeah. Agaba, no, that was a little vessel. Anyway, I mean, we all knew ourselves as cadets. Yeah. All cadets, we knew ourselves. And for all, for the seniors, Quite the number that we passed to, quite two numbers to mention actually. Yeah. Yes. Did you have any face-offs with anybody? Are there any issues that happened? No, the only thing I would say is uh, when we were cadets, you know, young men at sea, uh, we were captain, uh, late captain, what is the name? It's late. Okay. So, I mean, he wanted us to behave certain way okay. as cadets. Say so when you come to because those are the days when as cadets you are expected to give as an officer. Okay. You are being trained to be an officer. Yes. So even up to your behavior, your uh, mannerisms, people look at it. Yes. So when we go to the uh, salon to eat, you must properly dressed. Okay. And this captain I remember his name. Say so you must button up to the neck. You must button on. You no, know, as guys, you want to fly your. To do to do, yes. Say so, no, you must button up. In fact, he sent sent us out of uh, the salon one time that so go and party drink before you come and eat in the salon. Because I mean, uh, what you have then was proper salon. It then the table is laid out. You know the officers coming to eat it. Yeah. So they want to give us an officer. In fact, well, because along the line of our training, we were taken to two other services. I said on the bunny, the bunny and the Some were taken on the boat, some were on the bunny. I was on the bunny with Captain Richards. Captain Richards, we want to see how you handle the hot levels. Okay. So he's looking at you training. So to me, it was all part of training. Yeah. Because you have been trained to be an officer. Yeah. Those days, as an officer at sea, you are supposed to be a gentleman to be able to mix with the best in the country, okay. in the society. Yeah. So you are trained. So those are the kind of training we had then. Okay. Not only in navigating vessels, yeah. also in the behavior at sea as an officer. Okay. So we had, I mean, it was enjoyable. I mean, on reflection, you say yes. We had good training. So but there were some some cadets who didn't uh, like uh, this kind of thing. No, there, there was no because we took it as part of our training. Okay. There was no I wouldn't say there was any uh, stubborn cadets. Okay. We were all good cadets. Okay. Because we saw ourselves as officers. Yeah. So you have to conform. And there was pride in it. Oh, there was pride in it. There was pride in it. Those days, your white should be your white white should be white white, because even the company NNSL gives you. I mean, when you are coming to see, they kit you up. The moment you get to Liverpool, uh, for what is the uh, the company now? They take you there. They give you full uh, what do you call it uniform, okay. including your blazers. Mm. They give you everything, not to shoot. Mm. To the socks, everything will give it to you. So you are an officer. You have no excuse. You have no excuse. So you have no excuse not to dress properly. Okay. Yes. That is interesting. Yes. All right. Um, now, the routine of the voyages from Lagos to Liverpool or Liverpool to Lagos and the cargoes you carried, and the loading, the sellings. Yeah, the routine in those days, you know, the cargo then were mainly uh, coming with finished products from Europe, going back with uh, raw material. That's cocoa, uh, logs, or palm canals. So usually, you go to uh, supply to load logs. 
um, go to a to to do logs. Uh, also, uh, cocoa, we load logs in cocoa too. Okay. Uh, in Calabar, we load, uh, I think we load logs in Calabar too. Yeah. Uh, Palm Canyon also in Porta Port. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, along the coast, you go, you call in Ghana, load logs also. Uh, up to start calling at all the ports in West Africa to load. Then uh, coming back from from Liverpool, sometimes Middlesbrough, not only Liverpool, because okay. you go to London, you go to Liverpool, you go to Middlesbrough, actually any port in the UK. Okay. Coming back, you start sometimes you start from Dakar. Okay. Dakar to Banjo, Banjo to uh, Takuradi, Takuradi to Tema, Tema to Seldon Collats. Uh, this uh, French post, yeah, that's um, Lume and uh, uh, what's it called now? Then Lagos with discharge some, then for that court. After finishing discharging, then you start loading all the way back again okay. to, to the UK. And the, and the cycle and the continues. Cycle continues. Yes. <laughs> okay. And actually, that's what uh, very versatile, I mean, very. Yeah, free town too. It's called a free town. You know, actually, all the ports along the west coast of Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up to Point Noir. Yeah. That's so, in Cameroon. In, no, no, Angola. Point Noir is not in Angola, in uh, Congo. Congo? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Even up to Matadi. Matadi. Yes. That is Zahe. Zahe, yes. Zahe. I think Congo is in Congo, Brazzaville. I mean, uh, Point Noir is in Congo, Brazzaville. Mm. And Matali is in Congo Kinshasa. Kinshasa. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. And what what did you how did you spend your time at sea? What did you spend? Uh, for us as cadets, first of all, as cadets, who are who are giving tasks and you have to read your books. You okay. know, and like I said, we that went to Ghana, we had already gone in fact they allowed us to like, come to do class three, I mean third second minutes. Tickets immediately. Okay. But because of regulations, you need to have sit time. And that sit time, I mean, what they imposed on us was 48 months sit time before you can go and do your first uh, ticket. Yeah. 48 that's four years. Four years. Actually, by the end of the four years, some of us are to even leave. Those who are really tired. Mm -hmm. Four years continuous. It was mm -hmm. not, there was no break. This is a Ghana, Ghana regime, you said? Yes. Uh, those of us went to Ghana. That is true. Yeah, because uh, the British didn't want then was that I mean, you didn't come to UK to do your cadetship, your preschool. You are going to Ghana. So they assumed that they didn't teach you enough in Ghana. So they, they want to compensate with uh, sit time. Okay. But really, if they it took time to see our syllabus. We could actually do the class three, which is a permit. Yes, so, uh, as at sea, we read most of the time and do some sports. I mean, in those days we have uh, we had uh, table tennis on board, okay. and then uh, when you are in port, obviously when you are in port, you go ashore. Mm -hmm. When you are not on duty, yeah. Because when you are on duty, you take your duty very serious. Yeah. When you are on duty because you are sitting cargo, and I mean, uh, when you are on duty, you know, as in port, or uh, it's eight hours. Every eight hours you are on duty. So the eight hours you are free. Sometimes you want to rest. Okay. Yeah. Mixed with others on board. Okay. But in the night, mostly, you, you... In the night, you sleep. Okay. Yes. After doing your watch, because as cadets, you are given, you have to have keep sea watch. Yeah. And just like, after doing, maybe on 8 to 12. Yeah. At 12 o'clock, every other person is asleep. Yes. So you yeah, okay. have to go and sleep, because by 8 o'clock, right, you have to take your breakfast by 7.30 to resume by 8 o'clock. Mm. So... You want to go and have a rest and be fresh for you. Yeah. 
All right. There was one little question we had there, whether you had any face off with anybody. Not really. I never had any face off with anybody else. Yeah. I never had any face off with anybody. I believe, I mean, how do you feel I saved it? Well, to me, one of the lessons now I see is how to deal with different kinds of people. Yeah. And live with them. Because you are in that enclosure. Yes. You yes. have nowhere to go. Yes. So you have to live <laughs> harmoniously with everybody. That's right. Yes. All right. I think then we can go to question number six. Okay, we have yeah, treated we also the major cargoes. We yes. have treated that the major cargoes we yes. carry. We have treated that. We can go to seven. seven. How, how did you see the entry of entrance of containers? Yes, actually, yes, uh, it started like uh, you know, I mean, we are carrying like on the river class. That's river Ogo, river Benue, river Niger, uh, river Ogo, river Niger. The river class we call them. They started carrying them because they have enough that space to carry containers. Yes. We could not carry containers on, in the arches because uh, they were not designed for containers. Yes. They were designed for general cargo. Along the line, we started modifying and getting them to carry containers. But like I said, the containers came in, in trickles. Mm. Uh, and one of the undoings of National Line was adapting to changing trend in the cargo Yes, uh, yes. Courage because they just talk with uh, general cargo while the world was moving to Athena. Exactly. So the cargo came in, although in school we, were, we had an idea of what container cargo was because okay. we were taught about container cargo too. Okay. But it came in trickles. Yeah. We never knew. Uh, compared to what we have today, yes. I think it was a good form of. Yes. Mm. All right. I think we can now go to uh, ships. I sailed on. Uh, yes. I'm trying to remember my first vessel. Mm. Yes. Like again, like I said, after that first one, mm. we went to Liverpool. Then we are now put on this elbow. I mean, a bunny. It was after a bunny. I went on uh, River Ogu. The banner is Era Demster. Because uh, national land felt we needed more experience. Exposure. And exposure. And, uh, they put us, I think they had an agreement to Era uh, Demster. And you also met some of the expatriate oh, officers yes. oh, in, on, Nigeria, uh, in Nigeria National Ship in Bahrain. Oh, yes. Like I said, the, the first captain was a freshman, the yeah. Mozero. Then we had other captains. Even though we had the election that was an expatriate, we had, apart from white men, we had some other Africans who came to sail in national life too. Okay. Yes. We had some. Uh, we had. The only thing I, I noticed then, we were having the expatriates mostly as uh, deck officers, I see. not engineers. Mm -hmm. Yes, not engineers. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, we had a wide variety of um, wide range of uh, personnel. Okay. Yes. Were you based in Liverpool? Did you? Have no, a... I was never based in Liverpool. Uh, I well, I go to Liverpool often. Because Liverpool was like the center for all national line staff, sister. Okay. And in those days, if you are a national line uh, a cadet and you have not been to Liverpool, you are not. You must have one or two, one or two things to do in Liverpool. That's how I found that today you have a lot of Nigerians who are ex NSA in Liverpool. Yes. Yes. So, uh, but I never asked it. I always believed, yes, Nigeria can be better. And you never schooled in. A... No, I schooled in. Uh, okay, when I finished work well, for my class two, yeah. I mean, class three, yeah. actually went to Hall College of National Higher Education. Okay. That's class three. So, uh, then for class two, actually, I went to. Not, not Polytechnic. Okay. 
not in Liverpool, I never attended the end school. I see. So you are going to Liverpool, is either your vessel is docking there? Or an official. Or an official. Yes. Yes. And because I have a lot of friends here too. Okay. Go to so your family was based here all the time? Yeah, yes. All the time? Yes. Okay. And uh, I think I had a question how long it was taking people to commute between the ship and their families. You know, how long? Yeah, it means for those who are in Liverpool. Either those who are in Liverpool, even if you're in Nigeria. Even in Nigeria, how long yes. Do you used to take yes, to be sometimes away? the way, well, that was a problem for a lot of us. Because, uh, you know, you have to be away for like three months. Sometimes, well, initially we were away for like three, four months. Because, like I said, when you go, you are going all over the coast of West, West Coast. Yeah. Before you get to Liverpool, sometimes stay two, three weeks in Liverpool, I mean, UK, yeah. then start coming back again. Mm -hmm. I mean, your family is, like for me, my family was here in Lagos. Mm -hmm. So, before I get back to Lagos again, maybe three or four months. Yes. So, that's, I mean, a challenge that. Well, and you stay with them for how long? Uh, two weeks? Two, two weeks. No, not to one I mean, as long as the vessel was in Lagos. Yeah. Because once the vessel goes to Paracourt, that's it. So you come back again. I see. Yes. So okay. I don't have. I only one time my my wife actually sailed with me. I see. From Lagos to Fais. And how was the experience if your wife is going to sail with you? Did she come with any children? No. Okay. She came alone. She came alone. She came alone. She came alone. And, uh, Although you are allowed to actually have your children at least two okay. with you, okay. official that's official policy. Mm -hmm. uh, if you apply, mm -hmm. you can have two of your kids to stay with you, including mm -hmm. your wife. Mm -hmm. But so when your wife stay with you, what difference did it make to you? Can you explain it? You know, <laughs> uh, I think it was more relaxing. Okay, knowing that your wife is on board with you, uh, you. I mean, I think I enjoyed it. I see. Let me put it that way. Okay. Uh, it was uh, quite different from the other trips. Okay. Anytime your wife. Yes. Said it Only once. Only once. Yeah. It. And other NSL staff also sometimes will have their wives. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Like I said, that's an official policy. If you apply. Yeah. And the vessel you are sailing on has it because they limit the number of families on any vessel. I see. So if you apply and the investor is you can see on that person, of course you'll be granted to I mean for your wife to see with you. Okay. And uh, so So yes. So, but she's not giving anything. No is she, is she giving any allowance, any No, 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 no. no. It's at your, it's you apply it's at your for it. Okay. Yes, exactly. you apply for it. Of course, it's going to be eating for the vessel. Okay. Yes. It's going to be I mean, it's going to be catered for the vessel. By the vessel, okay. But, yes. but that's where it ends. That's where it ends. It's so not the, in there. The rest of the expenses is on you. So, yeah, exactly. I see. Well, no, yeah, okay. The expenses in the sense that when you get to another port, yes. you go to price. All the spending will come from your yes. pockets. Like if people are going out, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sure. You collect your uh, uh, what do you call it then? The money, your salary, part okay. of your advance, cash advance. Okay. You collect your cash advance, and that's it. And definitely, the ladies will love it. Oh, they enjoyed it. They enjoyed it. So long, you see, what happened then is most people want their wives to sail during summer. Okay. Because during because summer, of the cold. Not cold. The sea is not that rough. I see. Period of time. I see. If you allow your wife to sail during winter, mm. she will not enjoy it. <laughs> okay. In fact, she will probably do that. Why did you bring her? <laughs> is this what you will go through? <laughs> yeah. Yes, because during winter, it's always very rough. I see. Very rough. All right. So your wife sailed once with you. And, uh, so at such a time, you, have, you already had children? Oh, yes. How did you leave your children in most oh, care? My mother-in-law was with them in the house. Okay. Yes. okay. Well, that's a nice uh, yeah. information at least to know. Because I read somewhere that sometimes you could have a vessel where have a three or four NSL yes. wives well, yes. will be on board. I don't know whether it's up to four, but I know there's a limit yes. to the number of families that can be on board at a time. At a time. Okay. Yes. All right, that's fine. Um, then I think we can also now talk about 
the salary structure here between NNSL and other shipping lines? Yes, uh, the well, then the salary structure of national line was not too bad. Okay. Except you cannot compare with the European or Fires of of uh, companies. Of but along the West Coast, you know, when we started, seaman salary, uh, salary of officers at sea was quite more than those ashore. Okay. So, I mean, as a Nigerian, collecting that big salary, but not as Kedes. Kedes, you are doing stipends. I see. Kedes, because they say you are going to be officers. Okay. So, until you become an officer before your salary will be. So, for that, the salary of NSA was okay. I mean, it was not too bad. Compared to other, unless you are going to fight this or European, which then, if you don't, I mean, you know, most of us were comfortable with national salaries. Most of us were, obviously, I mean, we request, I mean, we always ask for more, I take for more, but overall, I think we are comfortable with salaries. And is it also an advantage that if you're an NLSL, you are shielded from racist or Yes. Uh, when, foreign shipping lines? Yes. When you are in NSL, even if you have any expatriate selling with you, it's not going to be up to you the way if you are in their country's yes. vessel, the yes. way it's to you. Yes. And you two have that confidence and I mean they are told. Yes. Nobody's going to come and I mean do any out to you. Okay. So I mean that that's another thing I would say kind of confidence. Okay. That you are sitting on your own that's it. You have a sense of ownership. This is my country. Yes, yes, yes. This is my country. Yeah. I'm proud to be here. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And uh, how would you describe your promotions and career development? Yes, uh, you know, uh, at sea, that's the beauty at sea. If you don't have a certificate, you don't envy the man out there. Because, you know, if you have your certificate, you'll be promoted. So, promotion was not an issue. I see. As so long as you have a certificate, promotion was not an issue. As okay. so long as you go to school, get your certificate, your certificate of competency, you know you're promoted. Just a question of time. Okay. So long as, as soon as there is an opportunity, you're promoted. Uh, it's not like sure that uh, you'll be backbiting before you get promoted or you have to go and lobby. Yeah. No. You have the certificate. Yeah. That's good. So, um, there's this question we have in 14 about how you would describe the NNSS story from when it was very good. Yes, uh, I think that sport. story yeah, started, the company started generating. <laughs> when, uh, how was it called? The government decided, you know, the Operation was directed initially. The other office was Lagos, but Liverpool office was directing the operation. Yes. So by the time I forgot the name of the government, the government that came said, "Look, this is a Nigerian company. I want everything the operational uh, decision to be taken in Lagos." And you started seeing. That is Shell Shell. I think it was Shell Shell. No, it was Shio Shagari, one of the military governments. It was Shio Shagari, Omaru Diko. Omaru Diko, yes. I think so. It was the Minister of Transport. Yes, I think so, yes. So, they now decide that the operational headquarters should be in Lagos. Yes. And that's when, I mean, before, when your lives deal, you don't need to be, you don't need to lobby, you know, I mean, those in the office, they keep records of everybody. They know when to relieve you. But once the effective operation came to Lagos, everything started going down. That was the beginning of the national life. I would say that was the beginning of the national Because national life never, I mean, I got to buy it. And the Nigerian bureaucracy came in. Nigerian way of doing things came And the cargo. The cargo was marketing not. Was uh -huh. was not you know, over there, Liverpool, they had a way of getting cargo. Yeah. 
But by the time it gets brought to Nigeria, then we are at the mercy of uh, all kinds of things. I mean, we are not getting good cargo. Uh, around that time, they formed this uh, line, uh, this conference called Kukwa. That's in partnership with uh, the Delta, Palm Line, Black Star Line. But the time also, I mean, it was not, it was not sustainable because time for repairs, you don't get repairs done. Either they said there's no money or do I do one more voyage and come back. The vessel started deteriorating. So in general, I would say that was the beginning of the end of the question. I agree. Yeah. Uh, and that also answers question number 15 for you. Yes, yes. Uh, in 16, do you have any personal challenges during your career? Was yeah, it the personal challenge I had was for us. I mean, we had it from the one. When we, it was like a disadvantage for us who went to Ghana. Okay. Because first of all, like I said, we needed 48 hours, 48 months sit down. With that, our peers, our mates, so they, they had already gone ahead. And uh, getting to, after, I mean, by the time we went for our class three, some of our mates who so got they were already doing their class two. So by the time, and by the time we did class two, national line was no more national line. You have to lobby to get, to get, I mean, the, the opportunity to go to school. I see. Because it was national line that was paying your school fees. Yes. Pay your yes. Yes. So by that time, it was like, who, who know to get that letter, I mean, uh, to go to school. Yes. So that kind of affected us. It's who you know. So by the time national line was uh, packing up, uh, I had only had my class two. So, I mean, if if uh, I did not go to Ghana, yeah. probably I would have had my class one. But thank God, at least, I went back on my own to do mm. class one. I see. Yes. I mean, that, to me, that's a personal disadvantage. Yeah, yeah it was, it was again. <laughs> And not just you, but everybody who went to Ghana, went to Ghana was yes. put through that, uh, through that yes. condition. Yes, for yes, for it has, for for it, 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 months. Yes, that is too stringent. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. So if we now talk about your how you coped, so when did you leave NSA? Ah, uh, left NSA when did you? Cotton part of. Part of, okay, that was in 1995. 1995. Yes. Okay, so how did you cope? Uh, well, for us, the uh, seamen or uh, officers, we had our certificates. Yeah. This was more or less international in scope. We could go anywhere. But I did not sail outside, uh, sailed on uh, other vessels around here. Then when the unit line came up, Sailed to the Unity Line. Also. Okay. Okay. Yes. Nigeria Unity Line. Nigeria Unity Line. Sailed on the Unity Line. Then uh, after that, uh, now came ashore. Okay. To morning master, uh, morning master's uh, duties. Yes. Started morning master with Marco with Candles. Okay. And then joined the Exxon Mobil as a low producer in Nigeria. It's not enough. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see. So, that uh, was good, then? Eh? Yes, yes. <laughs> I see. Okay. And so, now in retirement, are you still practicing? Uh, yes, and that's why I'm still, I'm still part of the Master Minor Association. Okay. Still want to keep abreast of what is uh, happening. Yes. So do you keep any favorite flags, artifacts, or what, what, what do you keep to remember your... No, no, no I don't think I... Yeah, I didn't keep anything really. Yeah, I don't have anything. You don't have any favorite flags? Uh, no, not really, no. 
I'm not in your house to remind you that you were once a captain. Once I, captain, I see. Once I, once I see. You know? Well, that knowledge, that in my head. Yeah. I always have, I mean, it's more than anything that you can have. Any momento you can, because... Do you achieve it? Does the children want to have a... Is no, it, not children interested? No, 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 they won't. But I wonder why, is it? Because... Uh, well, okay. Then, during that time, it was more straightforward. National line... I uh, was recruiting cadets, training them. You know what happened these days? People, they have man around. Yeah. Now, people go there on their own, seek admission, get admission, train the school, nowhere to go. It's who you know yeah. that will make you progress thereafter. Unless you're extremely lucky. Yeah. It should not be. Yeah. It should not be. First of all, there's no company that is dedicated to training Nigerians. There are no Nigerian vessels that you can like government vessels that you can really say okay we well, are mandated to train. I mean part of the mandate of NSA is to train people. Oh yes, oh yes. But now there's nothing like that. So I would say during that time it was easier. But like now there's no well, I mean I feel sorry for new kids. Now, the stress they go through, yeah. they, they go through a lot of stress. Yeah. We did not go through any stress. Yeah. You would describe what I said uh, uh, initially. Yeah. We did not go through any yeah. We were looked after. Yeah. We were pampered. Yeah. We were pampered. Yeah. But not disease. Yeah. 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 So, C is no more. Well, and and uh, also, C life generally has changed. Yeah. Why well, I said that? You know, those days who are on general cargo vessels. Yes. You get to port, you know for sure, minimum, you are staying five five to seven days. Okay. Minimum. Yes. Yes. So you get to know the ports. Yeah. These days, mostly containers. Yeah. In fact, you'd be lucky to spend 12 hours. 12 hours. Yes. You're out. Yeah. So the phone is no more there. I see. The phone is no more there. The camaraderie that existed with. See men and the officers at sea. Yes. No more day. It's all work, 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 work. Mm. So, sea life has actually changed. Better than that point. Yes, sea life has actually changed. That's all continuation of progress. Exactly. Yeah. That's why I said these days you do not just spend 12 hours in port. In the port, yes. Pa, 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 pa. Before you were, I mean, they are already starting the camp the containers. There are some are starting, some are loading. Yeah. And before you know it, stand by for that now. Stand by for that now, you're off. All right, Captain. On that note, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a wonderful time hearing about your experience. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.